In 2016, I was invited by the U.S. government to be part of the IVLP, International Visitor Citizenship Program, and the U.S. government supported me to travel to about 16, 16 cities in the U.S. Uh, to learn about different programs and what different institutions are doing in cancer care and civic participation. So I was lucky to, to visit the UTMD Anderson in Houston and I met the vice president and they were planning a program known as Eco Palliative. Um, so the idea was to use the Eco Palliative pro project, you know, from the New Mexico to engage nurses, to engage uh, pain doctors to engage people working in palliative care, you know, especially in the area of you know, giving pain drug, access to pain drug and all the rest. So I mentioned, when they mentioned that to me and I said, why not? Do you have anyone in Nigeria doing this program? And they said, no. I said, wow, why don't we bring this back to bring it to Nigeria because we have our nurses, we have our doctors who want to learn and you know, exchange ideas. So that's how we started that program. And so after one year into the program, you know, Dr. Yenu and me and a couple of others, we put together some survey and decided to turn this into a research for us to see how we can expand this program across other sub-Saharan Africa. And what did you find? It's, it's really, really very interesting because um, the, the, the survey actually helped us to understand the gap that is actually and in, in, in the kind of in the telemedicine that we are providing and what needs to be done, especially with knowledge. There was dramatic increase in knowledge from how we started over a year and where we are today, you know, with the with the, the clinicians that have been receiving this training. So what we are looking forward now is to see how we can find more funding to provide especially like internet access, probably some gadgets to those different facilities across Africa that we that are connected to this program because some of them sometimes they connect today and you don't get to see them next month maybe because of access to internet or funding to get those electronic and otherwise. The challenges are really huge. For instance, uh, for Nigeria in specific, one major challenge that we have is getting palliative care into the real academic structure. You know, what I mean is you really do not have a clear-cut defined program that you can do like maybe a master's or probably some specific core program that is focused on palliative care. What we really have is people just pick different courses on palliative care. And the truth is that over 80% of people who are diagnosed of cancer in Nigeria and so many African countries usually need palliative care. So it's a very serious issue, but it's really not given the kind of priority it needs. Maybe because the policymakers, you know, a lot of people really think that it's an impending debt and you really don't have to make so much investment in them. But that's not really correct and that's really not good because um, even though we know anyone is going to leave, but let's give the person happy ending. So um, I myself, um, I'm also an MBC and metastatic breast cancer advocate and that's one of the really core cool area I've really been advocating to find how we can increase knowledge in palliative care, how we can also increase people who are working in that area. Another challenge again is the limited professionals. We have very limited people that are working in palliative care. So you tend to see a situation whereby it's actually, you know, the rad onc who actually provide palliative care. So you would really have very few pain doctors who are focused in this in this area. You know, also psycho oncology is also a very big issue. You, because when people are really going through that, they really need, you know, people to also talk to them, provide some kind of talk therapy, you know, psychotherapy and all the rest. Yeah, and in Nigeria, you really don't have hospice homes, right? Unlike you know, in other places, that's really cultural. People don't want to hear that they are going to die. You know. Yeah, so that's also a huge challenge. But we can mitigate this if we continue to create awareness, if we continue to advocate, to engage policymakers especially, to invest more in cancer control, palliative care, and otherwise.